What's going on, everyone? So, as expected, LeBron James has opted out of his contract. He is going to re-sign. I mean, the reports are already coming up that he's expected to re-sign. Uh, but one of the reports that came out that I find very interesting is that he is willing to take a big enough discount to free up the full mid-level exception, which could make a significant impact. Now, I don't think LeBron is going to do that just to do it. Right? I don't think that LeBron's just going to take, you know, the basically take a 25 million or 20 million dollar discount just so the Lakers can sign, you know, Valanciunas on on a full mid-level as opposed to a taxpayer mid-level. But if say, you know, a DeMar DeRozan's market isn't what, you know, he wants it to be or expects it to be or let's say it's close, right? And let's say teams are offering him say 15 million and he's like, ah, two million less. I could go play with the Lakers. I could finally go back home and you know maybe try to go win a championship alongside LeBron and AD. Then I could see LeBron taking that discount to go get that impact player, somebody like that, um, or even Clay. Right? A lot of talks about Clay right now. Um, even you know Clay, um, you know Lakers potentially working out a trade for Clay, which I don't really see them working out a sign and trade. It's because it would hard cap them. Could make things difficult, but. Regardless, like, let's say, for argument's sake, let's say Clay, because also LeBron even said he wants Clay. So let's assume Clay's market is like 15 million, right? Does he go and take, you know, 13 million to go to Lakers instead of like the 15 million with like Orlando or something like that, right? Now, some people might say, why would Clay take that when he could just re sign with the Warriors? Well, a couple of reasons. One, the Warriors seem like they're not going to re sign him. And two, uh, there are reports that Clay feels slighted and that even if he doesn't get as much money elsewhere, he's still leaving the Warriors because he feels like, you know, hey, you guys obviously don't value me enough to, to pay. So, something to. Point it being is that the only way I see LeBron actually freeing up the full mid-level exception is if it is a real impact player that LeBron believes is worthy of that thirteen and a half million, right? If it's um if it's like Eric Gordon, well then I think LeBron's like, no, you guys are crazy. I'm not taking a discount for you to sign Eric Gordon. Another big factor though, everybody opted in, right? So you have Jackson Hayes opting in, which. I thought everybody would. I mean, I've talked about it several times on this channel. Like, I think it made sense for Jackson Hayes. Like, even if he could get a little more money elsewhere, right? Like, he who is he going to play alongside that can help him develop more than Anthony Davis, right? So it's like, I just, it made sense to me that like, hey, you, you opt in, you glue yourself to Anthony Davis all off season. And like, look at what Rui was able to do gluing himself to LeBron. Can Jackson Hayes have some of that impact alongside Anthony Davis it's a question right but the with Cam Reddish opting in D'Lo and you know now Hayes and basically everybody's in the Lakers roster is full right so they have to make a trade if they're going to sign any free agents or if they're going to use that that exception right so even if LeBron did take a discount right now the Lakers can't even sign anybody right like so that becomes a dilemma so this is i mean one way to look at this is that the lakers are almost guaranteed to make some type of trade now is that the big impact is that like oh lakers just went and landed you know uh, uh zach levine or something like that not necessarily but it could mean that they maybe go and get, you know, a Dorian Finney-Smith or something like and just stack a couple contracts, right? Maybe they give up, uh, you know, they, they take Cam Reddish, uh, uh, Jackson Hayes, you know, Jalen hood Shafino, and something else, right? You know, maybe it's Gabe Vincent, and then that gets you to like $20 million, and now they go get, you know, a guy or two, right? That could be something that the Lakers may potentially do where, you know, you're stacking like three bet minimum. They're all like 2.5 million. So I get you to like seven and a half million. And then Gabe Vincent's contract gets you another 11 million. So I guess it's like 18 and a half million, right? So they could take that and then maybe go get somebody clear a little salary off their books. And then LeBron takes the discount to go and get a guy such as you know, DeMar DeRozan. We'll just use him, right? So, that could be something where, like, okay, the Lakers went and traded for Dorian Finney-Smith. Again, just examples, right? 
Then DeMar DeRozan comes in and signs, and now you have something like Reeves, DeMar, Dorian Finney-Smith, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and you still have like a roster spot or two potentially to where you go sign a guy or two, right? So you could bring in a Valanchunas, right? So now uh, now you got that backup center, and then maybe bring Colin Caston in if you wanted to, or, you know, go get, you know, can you get a, a Kevin Porter Jr. or something, right? I know I've mentioned him a lot, but I just think he, you know, you talk about a 19-point-a-game scorer that you could, that needs to raise his stock, it is probably not going to be more than a vet minimum, and he's like, what, 23, something like that? He might not even be that old, right? So it's kind of where I'm at with that. So look, I would love if LeBron did a discount, right? Like, I've talked heavily about, like, it doesn't really heavily impact the roster. Like, because a lot of people's perception is, like, if LeBron takes a discount, then now the Lakers have, like, if he takes $20 million in in uh, discount, well, now the Lakers have $20 million to go. It doesn't work that way, right? Like, he could take, like I said, I've talked about it a dozen times. Right now, he could play for the vet minimum, and the Lakers would only have $8 million in cap space, Right? They'd have, like, yeah, their mid-level exception, but, like, again, you're signing two guys, you have, like, $21 million total, like, if you count the mid-level exception plus, like, the cap space, but, again, you're not freeing up, like, this insane amount. Like, people think, like, oh, now you got the exception, now you got this. No, like, and that's LeBron playing for the vet minimum. If he plays for even $10 million, now you don't have anything, <laughs> right? So now you just have the player exception. But LeBron, you know, taking a significant discount to now free up the mid-level exception. And then now the Lakers are looking to trade D'Lo. There's reports that the Lakers are active in trying to trade D'Angelo Russell. So now they go and trade D'Lo. And then now, you know, the, the Lakers go and do X, Y, and Z, right? Like, it's just, you, you start looking at it and it's like, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe now we can see this roster start shaping up a little bit because it's been kind of bleak, right? We're, we are not having the best type of offseason right now for the Lakers, right? Like the, the whole coaching search and that fiasco and that just chaos, right? And then like the main target that the Lakers wanted in DeJounte Murray, he's gone. And it's like, the, it's just like, come on, man. Can we just get a little bit of a break here? Can we just like have the, you know, the dice kind of roll our way a little bit here? It's like, can we, can we go on a little winning streak, right? So... I'm hoping, like, now, okay, you got your head coach, boom, right? D'Lo opted in, which is the best, that was the best situation the Lakers could have. Boom, right? LeBron's going to go, and he's going to take a discount for to free up the full mid-level exception. Boom, right? Now the Lakers could take D'Lo, go pull off a trade. Let's say you go get, I don't know, Zach Levine, right? Boom, now you got a real ceiling razor, right? Oh, let's go, you know, get a Dorian Finney's. Boom. Now you got another three and D piece. And now you can start really shaping up this roster to a point where it's like, okay, now this is a contending team. This is a team that we can win with, right? I, I talked about it, right? Lakers, they, they have a puncher's chance. Like even if they did run it back, right? You run it back, you have no injuries or, you know, minor injuries here and there, right? But for the most part, healthier season, right? You got, uh, a new head coach that's going to be better, right? So he should make everybody better and put everyone in better positions and better slots. Everyone should be better and have more chemistry and stuff. So, like, you could kind of make the argument, like, if the Lakers were to run it back, that they would be better. The problem is, is, like, so is everybody else, right? Everyone else is getting better. Everyone else is making moves to even improve and get better. Right? You look at, like, the Pelicans. They just got a, t a lot better getting DeJounte Murray. And so it's like... Yeah, like, would the Lakers have a puncher's chance like they had last year? Yeah, of course, right? Like, you know, like, it, the consensus was, man, if we were in the Dallas bracket, we're in the NBA Finals. I mean, even people that can't stand the Lakers were like, yeah, if the Lakers were on the other side of the bracket, they probably are in the Finals, right? So it's like, you know, like, there, you still have a chance, still have a shot. Like, there's not, there's not, like, even if we stand pat, outside of Denver, obviously, there's still not a team that I look at and go, man, there's no way the Lakers beat them. That doesn't mean that the Lakers will beat them, right? Like Minnesota, I'm not 100% sure, depending on how Minnesota plays, if we beat them. I think we can. I think we probably should, but it's not a guarantee. You know, same thing with Dallas, same thing with all these teams, right? I'd like to at least build a team that, you know, we're a lot more confident in, right? I'd like to build a team where it's like, okay, now you got with this piece, this piece, this piece, you know, with Reeves, LeBron, AD, 
whatever, Zach Levine and Dorian Finney-Smith. Like, now we're in business. Now we're cooking, right? Let's go. And and we got, you know, Clay Thompson on a on a, on, on a uh, mid-level exception, right? Like, let's now, now let's go, right? Let's go compete for a championship, something like that. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of uh, LeBron taking a discount for the mid-level exception? Um, do you think, like, no, like, there's nobody there that's worth it? Um, again, wh whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. Also, who would you like to see? That's a good question. Who would you like to see the Lakers land with the mid-level exception? Let's say, you know, best case scenario, right? Like, for me, be DeMar DeRozan. Like, if we get DeMar DeRozan, I just think he's far more value. He's still a, you know, $25 million guy. So you're basically getting him on, like, an excellent value. Um, but, no, I could see his market kind of limited. But, get okay, how you feel? What your thoughts are? Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me not. So me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Now, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Join the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.